Welcome to our virtual Christmas Eve traditional worship service here at Bakerstown United Methodist Church. It matters not where you are or when you are with us. We are glad that you have joined us in this celebration of the birth of Jesus. Our call to worship. The people who have lived in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let us pray. Holy God, in days of old you sent your angels to tell shepherds the good news. To you is born this day a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Help us hear with the shepherds this good news, that we too may glorify and praise you for all that we have seen and heard. Amen. Thank you. 
Here are these words from Luke chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them to stay in the inn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you and we praise you that we have the opportunity to gather, God, from the different places where we are worshiping from. God, we thank you that you are a God who unites us across boundaries and across time. God, that we may come together and worship you. God, during this day, at this hour, God, knowing that your spirit unites us, that your spirit guides us. God, we thank you and we praise you for all that you do for us, and we thank you and we praise you for this night. God, even though our, our traditions don't look as they have in the past, God, one thing we know never changes, and that is you. For that, we praise you and we thank you. But God, we also know that there are many who come before you this evening, God, with heavy concerns on their hearts. And God, as we lift up our concerns and our praises to you, we thank you that you hear our concerns. And Almighty God, we ask that you would be with each and every one of our concerns. And God, we ask that as this season is difficult for many, God, that your spirit would give us peace. And we pray that your spirit would give us peace that surpasses all understanding. God, that you would be with us. God, that you would heal us. God, that you would give us understanding. God, we also lift up this virus who, that is keeping us away from our families and our loved ones. God, we pray for your healing upon our land. God, we pray for your healing upon this nation. God, we pray for your healing upon this virus. 
God, we put this virus in your hands and we, God, we trust that you are at work. And God, we pray that this vaccine would go away in the name of Jesus. God, that we may feel the warm embrace of loved ones again. But until then, God, we rest in your comfort and we rest in your peace for all that you have done for us, all that you continue to do for us and all that you will do for us. For that, we praise you and we thank you. And we thank you for this night where we can pause. God, where we can take in the birth of your son who you sent to be with us, our Emmanuel, God with us. For that, we praise you and we thank you. And now we join together in the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
want to thank our children and our families who participated in that video, whether you've seen it for the first time during our worship service or you've watched it previously on our YouTube channel. It's always a blessing to have children involved in this family service. Of course, this was a year where we couldn't do a family service the traditional way, and so uh, we're glad that we were able to do include some of our children in that video. We hear the rest of the nativity story in Luke 2, 8 to 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angel left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let us pray. As we pause again, O oh God, to hear the familiar words of the Christmas story, we confess before you, God, that our hearts are heavy because it is not a normal year. We're not together in the usual way. But the beauty of the Christmas story is that you have come to earth and you are with us in the form of this child. And so we know that you are with us even now. And we pray, Lord, that just as the angels spoke to the shepherds that night, you will speak to us by the power of your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And the angel said, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. If you're like me, you wonder about this phrase, good news of great joy for all the people. Because most of the time when we hear good news, it is good news. Not for all, but for some. For instance... Recently, we heard about the vaccine for COVID-19 is being spread uh, around our nation and, in fact, around the world to help stop the fight of this virus. And this vaccination, this vaccine, is 95% effective. That's amazing in medical terms, 95% effective. And while we rejoice in this good news of a possible stop of this virus, of the potential of us regaining our lives back to normalcy in some way. We understand that this good news for all is really only good news for 95% of the people who will take it and will find it effective. There are 5% for whom it will not be effective. Then there are people who will not be able to take the vaccine. Some of them are, 
have medical allergies that will prohibit them from taking the vaccine. And so this great news that we heard about, this vaccine that will help to stop the spread of this virus that has plagued our world this year. The good news of the vaccine becomes good news for even less people. And then, there, of course, there are those who, for their own convictions, will not take the vaccine. And so this vaccine, that sounds like really good news, is good news for the majority of the people, but not for all the people. I mean, it's like that. There are often things in life that sound like good news, but it's not good news for all. It's only good news for some. For instance, we are praying for a white Christmas, and it sounds like in the Pittsburgh area, we might actually get a white Christmas this year, something that's, that's rare, really, when we think about it. And it's great. It's great to have a white Christmas. It's good news for us who want a white Christmas, but it's not so good news for those who have to go out and plow and salt the roads, those who have to serve in our community on the job in, this, in the midst of the snow and the cold. And so that good news is not good news for all, it's good news for some. And of course, those of us who are Steeler fans, the Bengals' victory was not good news for us on Monday night, even though it was good news for those Bengal fans. Good news is not always good news for all people. And here it is, this Christmas story. The angels announced to the shepherds that I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. But yet when we start to hear their message, we wonder, is it really good news for all? They say, for unto you is born a child in the city of David. He is the Messiah, the Lord. That sounds like good news for the Jewish audience hearing this gospel message. The city of David, that great king of the kingdom, that great king of Israel, the one who's supposed to set up a, an eternal kingdom. It's great news for Jewish folks. But is it really good news for all the people? Even the titles that were Christ the Lord. Those titles that were used, the city of David, Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the ones who the people of Israel have been waiting for for the centuries. And so is this good news for Jewish folks or for all folks? This good news for all the people. The Lord. I mean, when I first heard the phrase the Lord, I thought in terms of Roman or empire talk. And I was thinking, wow, the Roman Empire really wasn't good news for everyone. There were those who were exploited by the Roman Empire. In fact, Mary and Joseph had to go and participate in a census and go even in the midst of her expectancy and waiting to have a child. And a child coming any time, they had to go and to a place for the census for the Roman government. And so the government... The Roman Empire was not good news for everyone. And so to hear this phrase, the Savior, the Lord, that sounds like imperial language, not good news for all. But friends, we know that God's word is true. And so when the angels say that this is good news for all the people, maybe we need to look a little deeper, a little closer at what the angels are saying. And I think the first hint of this being good news for all people is found at who received this message of the birth of the Christ child. You see, the people who received this message were common, ordinary, working people, the shepherds. The shepherds were the ones who received this good news. They were not rich. They were not wealthy. They were not well-educated. They would have been looked down upon because they wouldn't have been able to, to adhere to the religious rituals of their day the way the good folks would have. But yet, these are the people, common, ordinary shepherds. These are the people that the angel gives this message to. 
And so maybe this message of good news for all the people really is a message that is inclusive. And then we hear the phrase, a Savior is born. For unto you in the city of David, a Savior has been born, who is Christ the Lord. And we wonder, is that where the good news for all the people is found, the fact that a Savior is sent? I mean, we might think, well, not everyone needs saving. I mean, there were probably people who heard the message of Christ's birth who were excited about it. A message given to ordinary shepherds, a message about the Christ, the Messiah, maybe not good news for those in charge. But yet this is good news for all the people. But do everybody, does everybody really need a savior? I mean, that's the message, that a savior is born. I mean, what about those good people? You know, those law-abiding, tax-paying, hard-working people? They don't cheat on their taxes. They don't cheat on their wives. They don't cheat in any way at all. They're good, moral, upstanding people. Do they need a savior? What about those people who are so far gone? Those people whose sins we wouldn't forgive. We wouldn't save them. We wouldn't save the child of luster the murderer, the outcast. People that we don't even think about on a day-to-day -day basis, we wouldn't think that they would be worthy of being saved. But the word of God tells us, friends, that no matter how good we think we are, we're all in need of a savior. Because the scriptures tell us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all need a savior. We all need saving. So no matter how good or bad we think we are, we need a Savior. And the good news is this, that the gift of God in Christ is eternal life, and it is a gift. It's not something we can earn. So those who are really bad, who are beyond hope, beyond saving, these are the people who also Hear this news. This is the good news. And so, friends, the good news of Christ's birth is that a Savior is sent for all the people. You see, God saw the needs of the world and sent his Son. The scripture said, God so loved the world that he gave his Son. It doesn't say that God loves the Jews and not the non-Jews. It doesn't say that God loves the good people and not those who we would call the bad people. That God loves only the religious people and not the non-religious or secular people. No, the scriptures tell us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And the message of Christmas is the message of that son coming into the world. A savior for all the people. A savior for you and for me. A savior. And that God didn't choose to come into the world in some magical, mystical way that would defy our understanding. Instead, God came into the world in the form of a humble baby, born in very meager, crude surroundings of a manger to tell us, to show us that God is with us because we've all come into the world by birth. Jesus, God's son, came into the world the same way. And so, friends, this is good news for all the people. It is good news for all. And so what we do on this special night, like we will do with all the other gifts we will receive, we have to open them. We have to receive them. We receive tonight 
this gift, this Savior, who is Christ, God's anointed for all people. Thanks be to God for this wonderful gift, the gift of his Son. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the glorious message of the angels to the shepherds that said, good news for all the people. Lord, your arrival is good news to us. It tells us that you have provided us a Savior. We thank you, God, that you've looked at our world and saw our need and provided for us your Son. And Lord, we just open our hearts and our lives to your Son anew this Christmas. We ask, Lord, that you would just come live and dwell in our hearts and our lives, that we would truly be your people. So come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. There's room in our hearts for you. Amen. Traditionally on Christmas Eve here at Bakerstown United Methodist Church and many churches throughout the world, we conclude the service by lighting a candle from the Christ candle and then sharing that candle, that light, throughout the sanctuary. Well, like so many other things this year, we're doing candle lighting a little differently. If you've taken an opportunity to get a candle from our church this week, you're invited to light your candle. Or if you have a candle at your home and you'd like to light a candle with us and sing Silent Night along, you're invited to do that. Because we know that this is a celebration of God's sending his great light, his son, into the world. And maybe it's a little more meaningful to know that that light has come to us where we are, where we reside. Jesus came into our world. And so the light this year is in our homes where we live so that we can take and receive that light, the light of Christ, and then symbolically spread it throughout our community. And so my prayer for you this Christmas season is that you would tr truly fill the light of Christ in your hearts and your lives. As we sing Silent Night, be blessed and have a Merry Christmas.